The main objective of this video is to provide you with some basic knowledge about the Merkle tree. The Merkle tree is used in IOTA's mask authenticated messaging. IOTA's mask authenticated messaging will be explained in IOTA tutorial 19. This is a Merkle tree. We start at the bottom with the data. M0, M1, M2, M3 are data. Data can be a file or it can be a private key. If we take this value with the lowercase m and hash it, we get this hashed value indicated by the capital letter M. We do this for all the data. These nodes are called leaf nodes where the data is hashed. If we append this hash value with this hash value as indicated here and hash it together, we get another hash value. We do the same for this hash value and this hash value. The plus sign means appending two values with each other. If we do the same with these two values, we get this hashed value. This hash value is called the root. The data M itself is not considered part of the Merkle tree, but the hash data M is part of the Merkle tree. So a Merkle tree is a tree of hashed values. Here are some Merkle tree terminology. If this is the parent, then these are the children of the parent. If this is the parent, then these two are the children of this parent. If we take this node as the reference, then this node is a sibling of this node. If we take this node as the reference, then this node is the sibling of this node. A hash tree or Merkle tree is a tree structure in which each leaf node is a hash of a block of data and each non-leaf node is a hash of its children. This results in a single hash called the Merkle root. If every node has two children, the tree is called a binary hash tree. These are old nodes. The top node is called the root node. The bottom nodes with no children are called leaf nodes. All nodes contain hashed values. This node has two children. This node has two children. This node has two children. Only leaf nodes have no children. Why use a Merkle tree? Why not hash all messages? So here are all messages and we hash these messages. We append all hash values together to a single string. Then we hash this single string. We get the root hash value. So the answer is, let's assume Bob get the root hash, this root hash, from a trusted source. If Alice wants to prove to Bob that M6, this message, is not tampered with, she needs to send message M6, this message, and all other hashed messages, these blue hashed messages, to Bob. Bob hashes message M6, append all these hash messages together to a single string, and hash this string to get one root hash. Bob compares this new root hash with a trusted source root hash to check if message M6, this message, is not tampered with. In this example, Alice has to provide 15 hashed values and the message M6 to Bob to prove that message M6 is not tampered with. A much better solution is using a Merkle tree. Again, as before, Bob gets the root hash from a trusted source. If Alice wants to prove that M6, this message, is not tampered with, she needs to send M6 and four hashed values to Bob. This hashed value this hashed value, this hashed value, and this hashed value. With the received information, Bob calculates the root hash value. Bob compares this root hash with the trusted source root hash to check if message M6 is not tampered with. In this example, Alice only needs to provide four hashed values and the message M6 to Bob to prove that message M6 is not tampered with. In comparison, in the previous example, Alice has to provide 16 hash values and message M6 to Bob. Using a Merkle tree provides integrity and validity of your data using a small amount of data that a trusted authority has to maintain. This also means little memory or disk space is needed. If a Merkle tree has more leaves, less hash values are needed in comparison to the number of leaves to validate if a message is not tampered with. In this example, we double the number of leaves. If we want to prove to Bob that this data is not tampered with, we only need to send this data, this hash, 
this hash, this hash, this hash, and this hash to Bob, so Bob can calculate the root hash to check if this data is not tampered with. A perfect Merkle binary tree has the following properties. The number of leaves is always 2 to the power of n, where n is an integer. Each node has 0 or 2 children. All leaves are on the same level. In a perfect binary tree, the following formulas can be applied. L is the number of leaves, n is the number of nodes, and Lv is the total number of levels. If you only have one leaf, you have only one node, which means you have only one level. In this particular situation, the leaf is also the root. If you have two leaves, you will have three nodes, which means you have two levels. If you have four leaves, you will have seven nodes, which means you have three levels. If you have eight leaves, you will have 15 nodes, which means you have four levels. If you have 16 leaves, you will have 31 nodes, which means you will have five levels. As you can see, the number of leaves are always to the power of n. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you have questions, leave your comments below. I'll do my best to answer them.